Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Which one do I do? Okay, 10 towns in England. Or most beautiful English villages in the Cotswolds. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, kish, tag, blah, toh, you. Let's do this one first. Oh, sneeze. I preemptive like original link to the video, top of the description. Right below that link to the Discord. I love all of these, you know, travel videos or just X country, um, you know, beautiful locations and landmarks, history, castles, villages. So, yeah, let's do it. Memory Seekers, original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord. My name is Connor. I will be your host. I just like to watch things, all right, guys? Um, ooh, watch Mojo. Easy content. Oh, uh, let's go. Yeah, it could be cool. The Cotswolds. Cotswolds. I just want to know where it is. Ooh, it's near Bristol? So, is this just all the Cotswolds? Um, okay, so it's like in between Bristol or above Swindon, that area. Okay. All right. Shoot. Uh, where was it? Oh god. Right here. Let's do it! In this video, we'll show you some of the prettiest villages, historical properties. In this video, we'll show you some of the prettiest villages, historical properties, and the oldest pub in England. Let's get started right here in Castlecombe. We're in the Cotswolds. Uh, the oldest pub that I know of is in New York. I forget the name. I think it was made in the late 1700s or early 1800s. Um, which is super old by these standards, especially for a bar in New York City where it wasn't demolished or anything. And I think Abraham Lincoln had been there. But I've never been there. I'm just telling from when my dad and brother went. Anyways, so yeah, that's old to us. I'm sure this will be three or four times as old. Pub in England. Let's get started right here in Castlecombe. We're in the Cotswolds. I'm going to give him a preemptive sub, just because it looks like cool content. Yay. Henry. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, just a quick question. Is it true that you can rent out, like, something like this to sleep in overnight? Or, or is it just a, a smaller cottage? A a am I wrong? If so, I want to know how much. How much? The Cotswolds is an expanse of sloping green hills and ancient picturesque towns and villages two hours west of London. It is designated an area of outstanding natural beauty and its quintessentially English charm spans six counties, predominantly Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire. The tiny village of Castle Coombe is our first stop, and it has been called the prettiest village in England. Fairy tale cottages, a parish church, and a few pubs adorn this sleepy village, frozen in time and unchanged since the 1600s. The honey-coloured limestone brickwork, synonymous with the Cotswolds, give a warming glow even on a cloudy day. As with many villages, parking is restricted, and you'll need to use the free car park at the top of the village and walk down, or try your luck with a few roadside spaces a little closer. A butt can you bike? The focal point of the village, the 14th century medieval market cross monument, was sadly boarded up for repairs. But you might recognize this area as used in Steven Spielberg's 2010 film Warhorse. 
Another notable Never movie saw. filmed in the village was the 1967 hit Doctor Doolittle with Rex Harrison. St Andrew's Parish Church is a Grade 1 listed building and typical of village churches built around the 13th century. The medieval clock is one of the oldest in the country. Most of the building has been replaced or restored over the years to the same design, but the tower is still the original 15th century. You're telling me back when in the times of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce and Edward Longshanks, this was this this thing was still there. This was here. That's crazy. Or at least being built. The clock is one of the oldest in the country. Most of the building has been replaced or restored over the years to the same design, but the tower is still the original 15th century structure. The village takes its name from the 12th century castle, which stood about a quarter of a mile north of the village. Today, there's nothing left of this structure. By the way, just a helpful tip, guys. You know how, like, the forward and back arrows do um, back and forward five seconds? Well, the, 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 the alligator signs, all right, they'll, they'll go you forward and backward frame by frame if you want to really take a close look at something that's quick. Just a little tip. Near this lies the body of Philip Garrett, born at King... Kingston Deverell in the county of Somerset. Every, every, the amount of towns and counties in New England that are the same name as English towns, just it blows my mind. New England makes sense, I know. But for many years, an in, an inhabitant of this place, and half. L and bailiff of the manor. If you're here during lunch, afternoon or evening, then a couple of pubs offer food and drink to the weary traveler, and in summer you can sit outside. Walking down the hill to the river, you will pass the old rectory tea room and gift shop. Cream teas are available, but only if you pre-book. With all of our locations, we'll put links in the description to help you. One of the classic and most photographed locations in the village is down on Water Lane and the weaver's cottages that hug the by Brook. So how old, guys, are, are, are these right here? Just like... Like, if you went back to Victorian times and you looked at this street, would these houses look unchanged or have they just kind of, you know? Back in the 15th century, weavers were deemed of high status for the felt work they accomplished on the cloth used in soldiers' uniforms. They could therefore pick prime property locations near rivers due to the water they needed as part of the fulling process. This used hot water and agitation to shrink the wool into felted garments. Apparently, one of the properties was home to the Blanket Brothers, and it's believed to be the birthplace of the blanket. Huh? Driving the country birthplace of the blanket. A blanket could just be an animal hide. So but huh? Did I am I am I miss am I slow? Did I not pay attention? Three lanes can be an adventure. Stepping just off the main road, the narrow lanes can catch you out with oncoming traffic what? or locals walking their dogs. Imagine so you had two, like, American trucks going side by side. How, how would you get by each other? Take care and drive slowly, especially if you're used to driving on the other side of the road. I'll stop pausing. Maybe. No, probably not. The 
a 19th century artist and craftsman, William Morris, called Bybury the most... No, no, pro no problem. It's all right. Beautiful. Sorry. The 19th century artist and craftsman, William Morris, called Bybury the most beautiful village in England when he visited it. The village is known for its 17th century stone cottages with steeply pitched roofs and the famous Arlington Row Weaver's Cottages, which supplied cloth to the nearby Arlington Mill. Parking can be tricky here, with very few spaces in this chocolate box village developed long before the motor car. Looking at that's just making me thirsty. The US car manufacturer Henry Ford thought Arlington Row was an icon of England. On a trip to the Cotswolds, he tried to buy the entire row of houses to ship back to Michigan so that he could include them in Greenfield Village Museum. Excuse me? Of England. On a trip to the Cotswolds, he tried to buy the entire row of houses to ship back to Michigan so that he could include them in Greenfield Village Museum. He wanted to ship a row of buildings? Luckily for us, his bid was unsuccessful. Thank God. He did, however, manage to purchase a rose cottage in the 1930s from the village of Chedworth. So a small piece of the Cotswolds made its way to America. He definitely had the money for it, but... Bybury has provided the backdrop of blockbuster films including Stardust and Bridget Jones' Diary. I just say something. I think Britain is extremely unique in one awesome way. In that you have such a long interrupted history where there weren't too many revolutions, there weren't too many civil wars, there were some, I know there were some revolution, you know, there were some civil wars and, and upheavals and, you know, you know, but you, whether we want to go to, to Cromwell or, or, or whatever, William of Orange, um, but in that you weren't nearly as affected by the destruction, you weren't nearly you did not succumb nearly to the destruction of of your land and buildings as mainland European countries did. Um, for instance, you know, like like in terms of like revolutions, like the you know 1848, uh, um, you know, no, you, I think you are extremely unique in having a a um, a almost unbroken millennia of English British history that again wasn't as ravaged by the world wars of bombardments of course you had the battle of Britain when you know a lot of parts of, of Britain were bombed but not nearly as much as other countries and so you are so unique in that you have that and it's just you have this this giant period of history and and buildings and culture that can go all the way back and I think that is unique in the true meaning of the word unique. Like unique means one of a kind. And um, the more I learn about uh, England, Great Britain, the more the more I realize just how special and and how privileged, how lucky you guys are, fortunate to, to have that. You know. Walking in a loop along the pretty paths by the river, Arlington Mill appears. This is now a private residence, but once housed a museum with a collection of period costumes produced by the Arlington weavers that lived in the cottages we just showed you. That beginning Industrial Revolution time, late 1700s. 
Look at how beautiful that is. Bybury should definitely not be missed on your Cotswolds tour. Burford is a small medieval town in West Oxfordshire and is often referred to as the southern gateway to the Cotswolds as people arrive from the east on the A40 from Oxford. The long sloping high street is a mix of pretty cottages and ancient shops that have changed little since the Tudor times. There are numerous tea rooms, craft stores, pubs and antique shops aplenty to entice you. Don't miss out on the side streets which have charming cute stores to view. The 15th century Paris Church of St. John the Baptist is magnificent and well preserved. Work started back in the 12th century, originally funded by wealthy local farmers and St. John the Baptist. Isn't he pretty important in something? Or am I thinking of something else? Did he have a St. John the Baptist? Maybe I'm wrong. Paris Church. Is I mean, clearly he was an important thing, but did, did he have like a big something to do with something big? I, uh, that was helpful. Something to do with something. John the Baptist is magnificent and well preserved. Work started back in the 12th century, originally funded by wealthy local farmers and merchants that had been successful in the local wool trade. They believed that making these donations would seal a place in heaven. A lengthy restoration of the church took place in the 1870s, bringing criticism from William Morris. The vicar at the time responded, the church, sir, is mine, and if I choose to, I shall stand on my head in it. This inspired William Morris to establish the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. The allow established the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. Under this stone lies Christopher Kempster, citizen and mason and ma mayor ma mason of London, who died the 12th of August, 1755, 1715, in the 89th year of his age. I won't read all of this. Thanks. Wife the elaborate tomb of St. Lawrence Tanfield and his wife can be viewed in the North Chapel. Tanfield was a prominent lawyer and politician who established a country seat in Burford in the 1580s. However, his reputation for corruption and harshness with tenants was remembered long after he died. The church has some beautiful architecture and stained glass windows, and we highly recommend visiting on your walk around Burford. Next time in part two of this video, we visit more stunning villages, a motor museum, the oldest pub in England, and the Folly Tower at Broadway. If you enjoyed part one, please help us by liking and consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss next week's episode and our future videos. Until the next time, happy travels from the memory seekers. I'm going to do it in a in an, another video. I'm not going to put them both together. I'll do part one and part two like he has it. Um, there's, there's something, again, awesome, like I said, the uniqueness of, of uninterrupted English-British history over millennia, little destruction compared to more, uh, mainland European countries. Um, but, it, and this doesn't just go for England, but a lot of other European countries, but uh, America is, obviously Native Americans were here, killed off by... American colonizers and uh, smallpox and diseases and manifest destiny, right? Um, 
right you know people usually know this main part right uh the native americans were not let's say treated fairly and they 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 uh, uh, uh you know it's it's there where they evolved as a people right like it literally evolved as a as a human species there just like british people like the, the fact that you are in if you're british and um you know, unless you're British and and you have uh, ancestors that you know were f that were from, so whether it be Pakistan or I don't know France or Germany, maybe it's not exactly true. But the fact that there are just you you are you are in you are on an island in a land that you are literally a part of, and I mean that in a literal sense that that you your ancestors all for thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe tens of thousands and tens of thousands of years were on this island, all right? I I'm not saying that there wasn't a lot of, my, you know, Saxon or, uh, you know, Franks and, um, you know, Normans and, and, and Vikings and obviously a, a lot of that, but still, same kind of vicinity that you kind of, grew up as a people on this land. Am I making sense? And I just, the Americans don't really have that unless you're a Native American where you are connected to the land in that way that for thousands and thousands of years, you, your people have been on this land. But for, you know, European settlers and European descendants to this day, we, we, we aren't living on the land. Same with like people in Australia or white South Africans or white Australians or or whatnot, uh, white New Zealanders, but I, I, I just, I, I would love to just go back to Ireland, England, and France, and just, just to kind of connect with the land. Does that sound psychotic, or does that sound, do you know what I mean? I, I just, I want to go back to England, I want to go back to Ireland, or I've never been to Ireland, back to England, back to France, and to Ireland for the first time. And just not partying. I don't want to party. I would if, you know, I'm not saying I wouldn't a night or go to a pub. That's great. But just to, like, go out in the land and, and walk or hike around or drive around or bike or, or whatnot. I love videos like this. I love you guys. I hope I didn't sound like a psycho. Uh, love y'all. Hope you're doing okay. If not. Nobody cares because you suck. I'm getting that's getting old. I'm sorry. It's it used it used to be a funny. Jo I'm joking, and I'll stop that. Uh, you guys are great. If not, if you're not doing okay, you'll be good soon. All right. Bye, guys. Can't wait to see your comments.